welcome to our live broadcast on Facebook and on YouTube today. We're glad that you joined us. Today I want to just deal with the subject of revival in your home and revival in your spirit. There's a spirit of revival. The Holy Spirit is about to break free and set people free and bring people together. John 10 verse 10 says that the enemy came to steal, kill and destroy. That's his mission. But God said, Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. And today I want to talk about this abundant life that God has given you through the Holy Spirit. And what role does the Holy Spirit play in your life? That's the question I want you to ask yourself today. What is the role of the Holy Spirit in your life? And that is also the topic of our message today. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I come before your throne of grace and mercy today and I want to bring every servant of you and every person that is watching this message today. I pray that your word will find entrance into their heart and that your Holy Spirit will minister to them where they are right now. That you will touch and change and transform them into that which you have called them to be in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you're about to do in people's lives. Let your message go out and reach those who need to be reached. Touch those who need to be touched. Heal the sick. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right, let's get right into the Word of God. Today I want to read from Acts 19 verse 1 through to 10. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, so I want you just to, to read with me. Take your Bibles, your Bible apps, and just go read with me from verse 1. It happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul went through the upper inland districts and came down to Ephesus and found some disciples. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you, went, when you believed in Jesus as the Christ? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he asked, into what then were you baptized? They said into John's baptism, Paul said, John performed a baptism of repentance, continually telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is, to confidently accept and joyfully believe in Jesus, the Messiah and Savior. After hearing this, they were baptized again, this time in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in unknown tongues and prophesying there were about 12 men in all and he went into the synagogue and people he came and he preached the gospel and he argued for three months speaking the word of God boldly reasoning and and arguing and persuading them about the kingdom of God verse 9 says but when some were becoming hardened and disobedient to the word of God discrediting and speaking evil of the way which is Jesus Christ before the congregation Paul left them taking the disciples with him and went on holding daily discussions in the lecture hall of Tyrannus instead of in the synagogue. Let's just stop there. 
You see, sometimes religion has got hold of people so much that they are so filled with religion that they miss the message of Christ. And they miss the great commission that Jesus instructed us. They miss it. What does God do? He moves on without them. Now let's read on. And Paul took these disciples in verse 10 says, This continued for two years, so that all the inhabitants of the west coast province of Asia Minor, that is Jews as well as Greeks, heard the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ. See, God only he needed 12 people, 12 disciples that Paul took and he taught them and through them reached the whole of Asia Minor in that area of Ephesus. God needs radical people filled with the Holy Spirit to preach the word of God boldly. The church doesn't need seat warmers. The church needs active people participating in the great commission that Jesus gave us. We don't need seed warmers. We need people with a passion for lost souls. We need people filled with the Holy Spirit, on fire, speaking the word of God with boldness. It says that Paul had services every single day for two years. And we can't even sit in a service for an hour on a Sunday. Then we worried about the seat that we're sitting on. It's getting too hard. It's getting too uncomfortable. You see, and then you've got these experts in the church. They sit there and they evaluate. They evaluate the pastor. They evaluate the pastor's wife. They evaluate the band, the way the band makes music, the way the people play, the way the, way the people do worship, how the people dress. Now these are your expert critics. You get an expert critic when, when uh, in the rest when in the restaurant business, and they go and they, they they call them food critics. So they come and they sit down and they work for a, they 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 write a, 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 a piece on this restaurant and they put a rating to it. They put a rating to it, this, and, and and they say, well, the food was this good, the service was this good, and they are they called food critics. And you get those in the church they call church critics you know what we were not called to be church critics we were called to be the light of the world we were called to be the salt of the earth you were called to be the salt you were called to be the light so be the light. You know when you put a light bulb into a, 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 into into a, 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 the, the the connection in the light. When you put the light switch on, what do you expect to come out of the light bulb? Light. And God made you to be the light. And sometimes we're so worried about the critics that we forget about what does God think. And I am more concerned about what God thinks of me than what people think of me. Am I being obedient to what God has instructed me to do? Am I being obedient to the call of God that is placed on my life? And am I, am I being obedient to the anointing that He has placed on my life? Ask yourself today. What does God want you to do in his kingdom stop worrying about what people think and 
start searching after God's heart. You know what? I've got this barometer in my life. And when things start getting tough, I know I'm on the right mission. I'm doing the right thing because the enemy is getting upset. And as long as I hear God's voice and I'm being obedient to His voice, I don't care what the enemy is about to do. I only care what my God is about to do. You know, do you still have that joy? Do you still have the joy of God in your life? Do you still live in His presence every day? Psalm, 100, Psalm 16 verse 11 says that in His presence is fullness of joy. If you're not being attacked by the enemy, maybe you backslidden. You know, we need to keep the word of God inside of us. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in the day and night, that you may observe to do all according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success the word of God says church is about family God's family Paul took 12 disciples 12 disciples and he taught them for two years until the revival broke out God needs you to start acting what he has given you to do and that's being the light of the world being the salt of the earth surrendering to the holy spirit being on fire searching for his presence all the time we need to take the territory for god's kingdom come on children of god many christians only pray when they are in trouble we need to pray. The word of God says pray all the time. You know, in some houses, very little worship takes place. Very little giving takes place. And then people look at themselves, they're disappointed in the way that they act and behave. And people will rather try and create memories than living out God's call on their life. We are created to fulfill God's vision for His kingdom. His kingdom, not our kingdom. It takes time and commitment to make a difference. And you can do it. Don't look at your past. Don't get stuck in the, what, what has happened yesterday. Yesterday is gone forever. Look to the future. We are living in the greatest moment in the history of the church. And you are called to be the light. How do you know that? Because the Holy Spirit testifies that you are a child of God. Romans 8 verse 14. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And in verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. We are the children of God. Have you ever walked into a place and, and you meet a person and you just know that they are a child of God? Because your Holy Spirit connects with the Holy Spirit inside of him or her. You see, the Holy Spirit is your light bulb. God's Word is your light bulb. It makes your light shine brighter. The Holy Spirit makes your light shine brighter. Proverbs 20, 27. connect with God on 
a spiritual level. As I said last week, that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is going to speak to your spirit by his Holy Spirit. And when you are totally surrendered to God, that's when you hear his voice more clearly. And you know what? We need to start taking up that sword. We need to start taking up the word of God and say, enemy, no more. You know, some people, they, they get to a point and they say, as Paul said, who shall deliver me from this flesh of sin? But they stop there and they don't carry on where Paul says that he buffets his body, surrendering it to the Holy Spirit so that he's led by the Spirit of God all the time. And Hebrews 4 verse 12 says it's for the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the Word of God. Surrender to God. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 14 says that we need to pray in tongues all the time. And James 2 verse 26 says your body cannot live without the Holy Spirit. James 1 21 that the word, the word of God renews your mind. Put your, the word of God in your mind. God wants us to live out, our, out of our spirit, not our flesh. God wants you to grow. God wants you to grow by his word. Hebrews 10, 39 says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of what? Love, power, kind of a sound mind. God wants you to go from glory to glory. Put yourself on the altar today and become a living sacrifice. Would you take Jesus into the wrong place? Would you take Jesus into a place of compromise? We belong to him. You cannot do what you want to do anymore. You've got to do what God has planned for your life. Bring your body into submission, 1 Corinthians 9.27. If you want to hear God's voice, do that. God's voice is His word speaking to you, crying out to you this very moment, saying, my child, come to me and I will give you rest. His Holy Spirit has been speaking to you through this entire message. You need to be led by the Spirit. And then He's saying, come, I will lead you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, come, I will lead you today. Stop looking money. Stop looking at the things of the world. Get rid of that. 1 John 5 verse 9 says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. 1 John 3 14 we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren he who does not love his brother abides in death how can we not love our brothers and sisters in Christ even if they are of a different color, a different nation, a different race, they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. You cannot call 
call yourself a child of God and hate another nation. 1 John 3 24 says that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside. Let's not grieve the Spirit. Let's not quench the Holy Spirit in our lives. But let's allow God's Spirit to work in us. Train your spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your life all the time. Allow God's Spirit in every area of your life. And I want to get back to the original question. What have you allowed the Holy Spirit to do? What is the role of the Holy Spirit in your life today? Your life. You heard me. Is the role of the Holy Spirit there to lead you? Is the role of the Holy Spirit there to teach you? Is, have you surrendered totally to the Holy Spirit in every area of your life? If you haven't done so, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. And say, God, forgive me. I come before you this morning and I'm saying, I'm sorry, Lord. I have quenched the Spirit. I've stopped the Spirit from working in my life. I've stopped the Spirit from teaching me. I've stopped the Spirit from leading me. I've held my hands back and said, I want to do it my way. But this morning I come and I say, Lord, I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it. I want to do it your way. I want you to take control, Holy Spirit. I want you to lead me, Holy Spirit. Won't you do that right now? Won't you allow the Holy Spirit to take control of every area of your life so that you can live a total life of victory, so that you can have the joy and live in the presence of God all the time? Do you want somebody to say of you, you know, when I meet you, I can feel the presence of God in your life. Then you are the one that needs to come before the Lord today. And I want to pray a prayer for you. And if you haven't committed your life to Jesus and you want to do it right now, I want to give you that opportunity as well. I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of salvation. And you are the only way that I can get to heaven. So I come before you today and I say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I surrender to you and I give my life to you. Forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me. Make me a new person today. I surrender my whole life into your hands. I ask it in your name, Jesus. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. And now I want to pray for each and every person. If you need a touch from God right now, I want to pray for you. In a moment, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, everyone that is in need of a touch from your Holy Spirit right now, as they listen to this message, as they listen to this broadcast, as they reach out right now, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just come over them right now. Yes, as your presence is here in this room, there will be so in the house, 
in their room where they are finding themselves right now in Jesus name touch them heal them set them free deliver them give them a fresh joy this morning in Jesus name thank you father thank you father I'm so glad that you listened to this message, that you didn't put the video off in the first five minutes, but that you listened to the entire message today. And if this has blessed you, and you want to link up with us, and you want to let us know how much this has meant to you, won't you log on to our website, www.hope-ministries.co.za and send us an email so that we can get in touch with you and bless you and pray for you. Amen. God bless you. Until the next time. Amen.